today is a crazy hot blistering day it's actually been super hot for the last three days roughly uh, between 90 95 degrees but uh, I think two days ago now I took delivery of this Passat that's behind me and IAA went through a website update they reverted back to the old one but <clears throat> excuse me the website looked really funny and I didn't catch that this car is not a running car. This car was sold as a theft recovery and as you can see, it just has minor dings here and there everywhere that it's marked. But this is all, you know, from normal wear and tear. It's a 2006. So it wasn't in an accident. I do have a key for it. It looks like it's a brand new key, but there is a high possibility that this key was not programmed and I don't see a key slot for this car but throwing the jump bucks on it this car's alarm goes off and I can't start it I can't do anything with this car so I'm kind of in a pickle I don't know what to do Either this car is gonna have to go to my mechanic who can hopefully figure it out, or it will have to go to the dealership where they can program this key if it is in fact not programmed to this car. Of course, buying from an auction, I don't know the history. I don't know how far the body shop got before the car got totaled out and got the branded title and sold off at the auction. So everything is kind of a blind point right now. Right here we have the battery cover, which was taken off. By the way, this car came from Eugene, and I noticed every single car that I buy from Eugene is absolutely filthy and dirty. Battery doesn't look to be in terrible shape, but it's not the best. So I think my goal right now will be uh, to find the horn wherever it is and disconnect it either maybe pull a fuse if that will be the quicker option just because I don't want to piss off my neighbors it's actually let's see it had some juice <coughs> oh heard that so the horn is somewhere on this side but I have no idea where but I guess I can throw my jump box on it and hear it much clearer so the battery has some juice hear the beeping inside car is clearly a little bit dirty which I have no problem cleaning up as long as it runs alrighty moment of truth Wow look at that it didn't go off there it is so let's find it oh it's somewhere in here let's see I'm pushing the key and nothing Took it off the jump box, it still has some juice on it. And there it goes. Alright, so if you guys have been following the channel, I bought a theft recovery Eclipse with no keys and pretty much the same thing. They were able to cut the key to the car, but the battery was so dead that they weren't able to program it to the car. So I'm assuming this is the exact same story. The key was made for it but the battery was so dead that they weren't able to connect to the onboard computer. As far as I know, just throwing a jump box on it does not work. It actually has to come from the main battery power source, which this battery is clearly dead. So, kinda don't know what I'm gonna do, but we'll see. Yeah, it definitely looks like a theft recovery car. Whole bunch of junk in here. Empty. I don't really wanna touch a lot of this stuff without gloves. But I want to find and see if I have the manual, which I don't. That's a bummer. Yeah. So I think the next game plan is somehow on Google, find out a fuse diagram, pull out that horn, and the next step would be see if I could um, 
get the gear lever to unlock, at least put it in neutral so I could load this thing up on a trailer. If I can't get it to start, I'm assuming I won't be able to unlock the steering wheel because it is locked. It's, I, I can't steer, so this might be the most challenging car I've had yet. Thank you YouTube and fellow YouTubers who helped me. Basically you pull this up. I pulled it out a lot. And it exposes this yellow tab. Oh, you can't see it because I put it into gear. That yellow tab right there. And what you do with your finger, push it in this way. And then with the other hand, push this in and move it back. Look at that, while I've had the doors open and kind of messing around in here, completely drained the battery. And thank you, Google. So we're looking for a F5 20 amp fuse in the engine bay. So I'm assuming it will be somewhere up top right here. Oh, the lighting is not so good. Here is our fuse box. Moving everything to the side. Oh, and there's our 20 amp. Let's see if I could do it by hand. This is it, I hope. There's the fuse, perfectly fine. I'll just place it here. And we could put the fuse box back on. I'm not locking it. Now, moment of truth. Will the alarm still go off? Last time it took a few seconds. Nope. I have found another one, which is right here. This is the horn relay. It says horn right here. So let's put this down and throw the jump box on again and see what happens. I had a Mustang a long time ago that had an alarm issue similar to this and I had to physically take apart the grill area. Oh man. <sighs> Still want to poke around a little bit, see if I could figure this out. So uh, this is the second car where I've had a wire like this. I don't know what this is for. If you guys know, let me know. The other one was the F-150 and I also had a wire. I don't remember what color, but it was just plugged into a fuse slot like this car. On this side, I need the F-17 fuse, which is this guy. Yeah, I mean, alarm clearly works. Try number three. I just really don't want to pull apart the fender to manually disconnect that horn. Did we do it? I think it's done. I don't hear anything. That's it. Third time's the charm. So I'll actually take this and put it somewhere in the back seat. You shall be safe here. Okay, so we have full power. Let's see. Radio. Oh, maybe the fuse I pulled out is related to something. No audio, that's not good, but oh well. Now, Oh, immobilizer active. And see, it's supposed to start the car. When you push it in, foot's on the brake, nothing happens. I can't shift gears. Right now, the alarm would be going off like crazy, but it is not. So that steering wheel light just turned on. Don't know what that's about. Figured since I have this fancy tool, holy moly, this camera is hot. Shouldn't have left it under the sun. Since I have this fancy tool, might as well see if I could connect and maybe reset it. So I have found the immobilizer. I hope it just switched right here. And as you guys can see, it does show a fault, three faults. So once it's done, it's going through its, uh, 20 tests, it's on its 10th. Once it's done, I'm gonna see if I could dive deeper 
into the immobilizer with this scan tool and see if I could somehow unlock it or reset it. All right, let's see, read fault codes. Key, impossible signal. Lock in requirements for steering column. I don't know what it means. But let me take a picture. Okay. Let's see if we could clear the codes. Yeah, nothing happens. So I didn't think that this was gonna work, but it was definitely worth a try. I think at this point, since I don't know if the key was actually attempted to get programmed to the car or not, or I mean, I don't know electrical systems. So I think uh, I'm gonna try to get a locksmith out to the car just so that I don't have to tow it. And I would assume that this would be the quickest way to get the car possibly running if a locksmith comes out to me and is able to program this key to the car. Uh, if not, then I think we'll just have to trailer it. But for now, I'm just gonna close everything up. It is super hot. It's like 95 degrees outside and I don't wanna be out here. <laughs> As you guys can see, today is a, a different day. It is super gloomy out. It's like raining on and off, but here's the latest with this Passat. So I had a specialist come out and try to make a key for it, but he said there are a whole bunch of fault codes with it, and it looks like the whole ignition system is busted, so he told me three parts that I need to replace. And those three parts are kind of expensive and he said the cluster needs to be replaced because apparently it has some kind of chip that's a computer that communicates it with the key. But if I get a different cluster, finding something with the exact mileage is very difficult. So I think the best bet for this car is to be a parts only car. So right now I am going to take it to Copart and I'm gonna consign with them and uh, see how much this car can sell for so I could recoup some money. Clearly I didn't clean this car out, but I just want to take a peek. Maybe there is something of value here, like tools or whatnot, before I take it back to the auction. There's some chains, all season chains. I don't know if I want them though. Funny, see, everything is going off, the car is going crazy with the alarm. But since I took the fuse out, it's not making any noise. Let's put this fuse back in. Uh, there we go. Put this cover back on. Unfortunate that it has to end this way, but this isn't even the challenge. The challenge will be getting it up on the trailer with this. Oh boy. This is what we're working with. I got the jump box connected to the winch. The one thing I am still worried about is the trailer position. And honestly, it almost looks like this still won't work. I did not realize how hard it would be to get the trailer lined up because the steering does not work. So I have to get this perfectly so that it goes on with the first try. I could not find a good place to grab it with the winch. So since this car is going to auction, I don't care where I grab it, and that's what it's going against. I just want the car out of here.
the kids helped. So, as you guys saw, aces. Got it on, got it strapped down, and let's head out to Copart. I made it to Copart. Honestly, I think the last time I was here was probably two or three months ago when I bought the Audi A4. I haven't purchased a car from this Copart location in months. But something tells me that's going to change real soon. Well, let's go inside, do the paperwork, and get this Passat off my trailer and hopefully sell it soon. Holy moly guacamole, that took forever! Man, they got a new girl working there and we had to redo the co-park consignment paperwork three times! <laughs> three times! Man, but it's done and she was very nice and I get it, you know, new person, you're not comfortable with the system and whatnot, it's okay. But it's raining out. <laughs> Oh boy, so we're dropping off the car by their gate now uh, so they know where to pick it up. So I'm just lining up the trailer so I could just push it off and get it off my trailer. Finally, final moment. So since this car doesn't run, I hope I got these lined up because once it starts coming off the trailer, I am not stopping. Let's see how this goes and how this will end. Whew. We made it. Nice job, nice job, yay me. Bye Passat. Hope I don't see you ever again. Wow, look at this door. Shut, there you go. Bye Passat. Put the trailer back in order. Let's get out of here. I am going to treat it as if I no longer own that Passat. I have no idea how much money I am going to get out of it. Um, I will probably post or update the description once the car is sold. I'll tell you guys if I make any money or lose any money on it. But that's how it goes sometimes. You don't always win. It was my fault that I didn't really pay attention and I saw that it was sold by an insurance company. It had keys, theft recovery. You know, it seems like a straightforward purchase. I've had so many of these before, but I just assumed that it was a run and drive, which it wasn't, and you know, clearly I couldn't get it going, and I didn't want to invest the time and money into getting it started and running, so we'll just sell it as is. And for this video, this is going to be it, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Today's adventure, although it wasn't a successful purchase and repair, but this is kind of what happens. Stick around for other awesome videos. I will be posting other projects that I'm working on. So stick around. I appreciate your support and I will see you guys in another video. Take care.